Okay, so we've got a working form and it's time to write some authentication code. To do that, we'll first need to set up sessions. So let's go into the config folder and open up config.php. Now scroll down to the encryption key and make sure to set it to a random string. Codeigniter will use that key to encrypt cookies and we'll use it to sort the user passwords with later on. Next, we'll configure the session. Take the underscore out of the cookie name because that tends to lead to problems in some browsers. Let's have the session expire on closing the browser and let's encrypt the cookie for better security. Also, let's use the database for storing sessions because that's just much safer than cookies. We'll just leave the rest of the settings like they are now. Okay, next we need to create the session table. So it's time to bring in another migration file. This one is number three and let's call it something like create underscore sessions. Luckily, I have a snippet that creates a class for session table migration, so let's go. As you'll have noticed, I have snippets for a lot of recurring tasks. It just saves so much time. In the up method, we'll create a default CodeIgniter session table. So here's the field, and we add the fields to forge and create a table. And after we've created it, we'll add a key for last activity. And for a rollback, this class will just drop the entire table. So let's just run this migration. Okay, so now that we've got sessions set up, let's open up our base controller admin underscore controller again. We'll need to load sessions in every admin page, so let's load that in the constructor. Now let's go back to the browser and load an admin page, see if we're not getting any errors regarding sessions. Okay, well that seems to be in order. Okay, now that we've got session set up, let's do some coding. Authentication is all about user management, so I think it would be a good idea to handle authentication in the user model. If I wanted to write an entire authentication library, I would probably create a library just to abstract it away from the user logic, but the user model will do just fine here, I think. So let's open up our user model and just add four methods. One will be called login. It will fetch a user by email and password and log them in if they exist. The second method will be called logout. It will kill the login session. The next one is called logged in. It will return true if the user is currently logged in and false if he's not. The last method is an auxiliary method called hash that will just use to hash a password. So let's think about how we log in a user. First, we'll have to find a user and store them in a variable called user. So let's use the my model get by method for that. We'll just pass the email address that we'll get from the post. And we'll also have to supply a password. Now that will be encrypted using the user models hash function that we'll code in a minute. And into that method, we'll inject the password from post as a parameter. Now we'll pass true as the second parameter of get by because we want a single user object and not an array of objects. So let's just quickly code that hash method as well. It will take a string as a parameter and return a hash of that string. Now that will be a SHA-512 hash of a 128 characters long. And it will take the string as the second parameter. But this string will be sorted with the encryption key that we just set in config.php a minute ago. Now the idea behind sorting a password is that it becomes a very long string and it will be more difficult to hack it if somebody would be able to steal your database. Okay, and it's back to the login method. Now, if we could not find any result, then user would be an empty array. So we can do a check there. If user is not an empty array, then a user with the posted credentials exists, and we can log him in. To do so, let's set a data array containing some login information. Now we'll store the user's name, which would be equal to the name property of the user we just fetched. We'll also store the user's email address and we'll store the user's ID. And finally, let's set a logged in value to true to reflect that the user is logged in. Now let's just store that array in the session so it will persist as long as we have the browser open. Now that we know how a user is logged in, it's also easy to write the logged in method that will perform the login check. All we have to do is return the session variable logged in and we'll just cast it as a boolean so it will return either true or false. 
logging out a user is equally simple. All we have to do is destroy the session and that will also clear the logged in session variable, resulting the logged in method to return false. Time to add all this goodness to the controller. Open up the user controller and call the login method from the user model, in the case that the form validates. Now I would like to test all that code, but for that I'll need a user to be in the database. So let's add one now. I'll just type in my own email address here and my name. Now for the password, we said we wanted to store that as a SHA-512 hash for security. And I would also like to sort it, so we'll just use the encryption key for that string. Okay, so if my password was touch plus, then with a sort, it would look like this. And hashed into a SHA-512 string, it would look like this. So let's just store that. Okay, now for some testing. I'll just echo the session settings above the form for now. Wrap that into pre-tags. Okay, let's return to the browser and try to log in. There's no user data in the session now, as you can see. Now, if I just try to log in using a wrong password, let's see if we get session data then. Nope, that doesn't work. Uh, let's try again, but this time with the touch plus password. And yep, we have a login session set, so that seems to be working just fine. Let's remove that session dump from the login form and move on. We're still missing something here. If I'm already logged in, I'm still seeing the login form. Hmm, not good. Let's go back to the user controller and assume the user is not logged in. But then if he is, let's redirect him to the dashboard. Also, no matter if I log in correctly or not, I will always stay on the login page. We don't want that. Okay, let's fix that with a conditional. If the login method returns true, I want to be redirected to the dashboard. And let's just store that dashboard URI in a variable there. Now, if it returns false, I want an error to be set. So let's just set that as your flash data. And I want the page to reload. Okay, let's check to see if that works. Let's just go to the browser. I'm currently logged in. So if I reload the page, I should get the dashboard. Okay, it says here we have an undefined property of logged in. That probably means we're holding the logged in method, but without parentheses. Let's just go back to the user controller and, oh yes, here it is. We need to add parentheses here. So let's just try this once more, reload the page. And okay, that seems to work. Now let's just create a logout page for us to visit. We'll just call the logout method there and redirect the user. Now, go to the logout page. Uh, we've already set up the proper link in the dashboard sidebar, so I'll just click that. And we're being redirected to the login form and staying there, meaning we are indeed logged out, so that's okay. So now we have a session variable that will tell us if the user is logged in. Let's open up the admin base controller and add an authentication test to the constructor. And what that'll do is it will run an authentication test for every controller that extends admin controller. Let's make it so that the test will do a check. If the user model logged in method returns false, then let's redirect the user to the login form. However, there are some exceptions. So let's create an array to handle those. We don't want this login check to be run at the login page or at the logout page. So we'll just store these pages in an array and then do a check to see if we are currently at one of those pages. And only if we're not, then we'll do the login check. This will keep us from unexpected behavior such as being redirected to the login page when you're already on the login page or being redirected to the login page when you're on the logout page. Okay, so let's check that. We're currently logged in, so if I'm at the dashboard and refresh the page, I should remain there. Okay, so that works. Now let's log out and try and visit that page again. And I'm being redirected to the login form, so that's good. Also, I didn't end up in a never-ending loop while being at the logout link or here at the login link, so that all seems to work just fine. And let's just leave it at that. Our authentication methods are far from complete, of course. In a real life situation, you would want to enable the user to reset their password, for instance, 
and you might also want to implement authorization. Uh, right now, we're only checking for authentication, which basically means that we let you into the admin panel if you can identify yourself as one of our users. But you may also want to distinguish between different kinds of users and give them access to different parts of the site. But that's all beyond the scope of this course. But if you're interested, please tell us in a comment at the bottom of this course page. In the next video, we'll be managing users. And I think you will find that it's been well worth having set up that base model. See you then.